Hey guys, it's your favorite internet plumber, Saint. And today I'm gonna to be showing you the evolution of plungers and how to use them in unblocking some of your drains um, and a little bit of maintenance on your drains as well. Uh, there's a few different plungers and obviously there's different drains in your house. So I'll go through a few different methods. Um, as always, if these fail for you and you still can't unblock your drain, you'll probably have to call in a professional. But these are the sort of things that you can do yourself um, that can save you a bit of coin. So don't forget to hit that thick little subscribe button down in the corner. Um, I'm just out here trying to enlighten customers on how they can save a little bit of money and do a bit of maintenance on their own house's plumbing and also maybe get a plumber who's on site with a tough drain to unblock, uh, get him out of a bind. So don't forget to support Plumber Saint and um, yeah, like, comment for more and uh, yeah, subscribe. Thanks guys. Let's get into it. I think the subscribe button's over here. <laughs> Okay, most of you probably know of this plunger. It's a plunger that we all grew up knowing. It still is a good plunger. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with it, but this is the, the OG, you could say. Where the first evolution of plunging, at least for me as a plumber, was when this bad boy came out, which is obviously that, times about 10. So I can't even push down on a flat surface. It's, got, it's just that good, but you can also get it right in there very good plunger there's nothing wrong with this plunger still works it's just much less of a uh, of force and the next stage up is this bad boy which I'll show you how that works and um, you can basically use that on every job it's the the bees knees but at the same time there's nothing wrong with these two in everybody's standard houses for unblocking drains. At the end, I can show you how uh, this bad boy works. This one's more for outside if all of your drains in the house are, uh, are blocked. But also I've made this one. So I can show you the method in making it, save yourself a bit of coin, especially if you're a plumber. And um, this can get you out of a fair bit of a, a financial bind if, uh, if you know how to use it correctly. Okay, so basically for your toilet, I'll, uh, I'll fill it up with a bit of excessive toilet paper and you should be able to just get a nice, normal toilet paper blockage right near the top here. The one thing I will say, which is very important, is do not use paper towel, um, wet wipes, baby wipes, even dissolv dissolvable wipes, they're all bad. The only thing that should be going into your toilet is toilet paper. And obviously whatever comes out of your body. This is for when you got kids over on Christmas day and they don't know how much toilet paper they're using and all of a sudden you got 15 people at the house and your toilet's blocked. Damn it, my toilet's too good. Hold on, take two. Okay, take two, I've had to put a fair bit in there now. Pretty much a roll, but we'll get her blocked. That's what we're here for. Okay. Voila, blocked toilet. Now this is something that you'd normally see. <laughs> um, what you wanna do in this situation you can see it might slowly be going down. You obviously don't want to flush the toilet too much because it's going to fill the top, but you can put a little bit more in. Get it right up. Make sure it's really blocked. And then you get your old trusty and basically move everything down there right into the mouth and push it through. Boom. Just like that. After you do it, you're going to want to give it a couple of flushes because it is a big amount that you've moved through. It might just move down into the next junction down the run and the toilet will fill up after a couple of flushes again and you've got to keep at it. If that is the case, that's usually when I would bring in the bigger boy. I can see if I can try and show you how it works just by blocking it now and giving it a flush and then 
giving you a quick one down, but basically all plungers, you wanna just really get as much of that mouth of the toilet as you can covered. Even though, even if it's full of toilet paper or God knows what, you wanna keep it covered, get right down in there. And plunge up and down, forcefully trying to push whatever it is into the drain. This bad boy can work in the opposite effect as well. Sometimes you can actually, it works like a, kind of like a syringe. What you can do with this bad boy is you can actually suck the plunges up and then, and really push it down the drain. Again, as I said, if normal plunging can't unblock it, there might be a bigger, more sinister plunge issue going on, which you might be able to get from outside. Just a little one as well. <laughs> if you don't have a plunger, and you know, you got the whole family over and it's uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever the case, and you got a block toilet like it was just before, believe it or not, make sure it's on tight, but your brush. You can actually get your brush down there and just try and push right into the bottom of the drain there. And you'd be surprised with a little bit of uh, elbow grease and force, you might be able to just push through uh, your uncles, you know, Burrito. <laughs> Let's move on to some basins and sinks. Ah, oh, onto a basin. Uh, you might have one that just has the cross grill, or nowadays there's these ones that are push down and push ups. Um, I would suggest doing a little bit of maintenance on these quite regularly, making sure that this bit doesn't seize up so you can get it off. But that centerpiece can just come off. It's actually quite dirty, so. Um, and you'll see that there in there is your crisscrosses. That's where it's usually going to catch all the hair and things like that. Um, you can use long nose pliers and things to at least pull out some of the hair. It'll help out. Also, I find a lot of uh, basins and things nowadays have a overflow. You might find it here at the back. It, it can be anywhere, but it's generally just a hole that comes down. So if this does fill up, it can go down there. But again, if your drain is blocked, that means both of them are blocked. So it's more of a precautionary, if you accidentally put the plug down and walked away, it'll, it would bypass and still drain without overflowing over here. But while we're plunging, if I was to plunge that now, the air's just gonna come out of here. Um, so what you need to do is, is generally block that. Sometimes you can use a rag or something, block that. I'll give you the example of it uh, filling up, making sure that that is blocked. And that's gonna give you the pressure to get right in and actually plunge that drain. You'll see that uh, it's even working good and bringing up some of the dirt and, and grime and things that is in the drain now. Same system goes for this one. You just uh, get out it going, obviously block it, and that's gonna create real good pressure. That one's actually, probably could have used a little bit of a plunger actually. Beautiful. The road plunge, which a lot of people won't have, but obviously, exact same process. Get it on there. The only problem is, it's harder to do that. You might have to stick a rag in there or something, because you need two hands for this one. But generally, this is used for your bigger blockages in your toilets and things like that. All right, so your sink is basically the same sort of drain that you'd see in your laundry trough. Um, it's slightly bigger, but it's still the same sort of drain as your basin that we did before. And it's exactly the same as your shower base if you have a square base or something that just has the, the circle or the square in it. Um, I will show you a tray after this, but basically the same process you wanna do 
is give it that head pressure. So filling it up a little bit, like the toilet, uh, like the basin. I use hot water. This drain actually isn't dry, uh, blocked at the moment, but it's very, very old and it's not the fastest moving. So you can see that as the water's going down, it actually wants to suck my plunger down. That's good. that one as well, it's still the same concept. Let a bit in and then plunge it. And uh, also, same as before, you'd sit that over there, block it, get that head pressure building up. Suck it up and go. That's basically how you do that. As I said, it's the same as your shower, your laundry, your basin, your sinks. They're, they're all pretty much the same sort of design. I'll show you now a tray, um, a shower tray, which might need a couple of different little things to get into it. I'll, uh, for the purpose of DIY, I'm gonna get the tray out with a couple of butter knives and I'll show you what's underneath your normal shower tray and how we can get to that drain uh, to give it a bit of maintenance and possibly a plunge. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is basically just try and get my knife under there. Usually a chisel or something would be better, but you can wedge that up. Quite dirty itself. Put that side there. And then you can see down inside the tray, you can see that it actually has caught quite a bit of hair. That's a second tray there. Get that one up. Quite a lot of guck and stuff there. So it definitely needs a clean. And then we can see where we can get our plunger and things onto. I'm gonna have to give these a clean now. Okay, so we've got it open, it's cleaned up a bit. I've pretty much just kind of shoved that down there a little bit. It'll still block it enough for the water to come and rise up. Now, obviously this plunger is not the greatest for this application, but you'd be surprised what it can actually still do. This one, not as good, doesn't reach the bottom. So, failed plunger in this situation. But, this bad boy's a treat for this situation. Again, you might find that you can't get any plunger into your tray. And if that's the case, and no plungers work for your tray because it's just in a weird spot or it's a weird hole. There's, there's thousands of these. Um, you probably am gonna need a plumber. There is a thing called an eel, which you can feed down. Um, I will do a video on an eel later, but this one's about plunging. So uh, I've got one more plunger to show you that's outside plunging the whole house. We'll get into that. And um, yeah, hopefully so far your drains are starting to get a bit cleaner as well. Okay, so out here, most people, if not everybody, should have a overflow gully on their house. Um, it looks like this. So basically what you're gonna need to do is just get that into there. It's gonna be perfect to go down. Get past that junction, so we know we're right down at the water. And it's just a matter of... <laughs> Basically, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna block my drains, but if this was overflowing with God knows what, paper and all sorts, this is gonna be your first bet. And if you can't move it with this, you need a plumber. 
just quickly though, I'll show you that it is just gal, 15 mil gal. That's just a cap, 600 piece socket, 600 piece. Change into a brass socket with a brass all thread, a locking nut and a cover plate to 100 mil rubber and another locking nut. All together, this costs about $20 and 15 minutes worth of time. You can buy these pre-made um, and I think they're somewhere around one or 200 bucks. So you can make it though. All right, thanks guys. Basically that's just plunging. It's the first thing a plumber's gonna do if you've got a block drain when he comes into your house, he's gonna have a bit of a plunge around. If he can't get it with a plunger, he's gonna find other means to, to get into it. Generally, it's gonna be an eel or a pressure jet or something of that, but it's all cash. Um, hit the subscribe, drop a like, uh, comment on future things you'd like to see. I do have some other videos in, in mind. Um, I've had a busy month, but I'm back on the horse making more videos, so love you all. See you next time. Plumber's saying is thick and juicy. All right, goodbye, everybody.